Now we're in this part. This is where the uh, columns are. Okay. 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 So how long did it take you to get the Vendome uh, stills? Because I remember hearing you in an interview where you had them on hold for a period of time. Well, when the company was founded, shortly thereafter, we started, after right around changing the walls, we raised capital and we started working on building our equipment, which we went straight to Vendome for. But then, you know, there were some different forks in the road. And then eventually we established ourselves at the experimental distillery, which we got then done to build us a 100 gallon pot still, which can only produce about 50 barrels a year. But we were already working with Vendom on a larger system. So eventually, once we built this facility, it, it was, uh, it just worked out really well. Now that was, you know, so really we've been working with Vendom since 2012, 2013. Um, we just upgraded our column still to, uh, to help with our capacity. So we built Riverfront in 2017, and in 2021, we dropped a new uh, column in here. Um, but they make the best distillation equipment in the world. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. So obviously we're distilling on the grain in here versus distilling off the grain in here, okay? So all of the solids have already been filtered out in the, uh, with the column still. So this really also assists in producing a cleaner product as well with the, with the uh, doubler. Is this a uh, 24-7 operation? No, so this is not, a, this could be a 24-7 operation. We do not run this 24-7, uh, but we are running about uh, you know, six days a week. So we'll come off the still at uh, you know a little north of 130, and then we will um, barrel at 115. So that is a low. I would say it's a low distillation proof, which again holds on to a lot of flavor, a lot of richness and complexity from those specialty multi grains that we utilize. And then, um, and then again, going into 53 gallon New American White Oaks at a, uh, at a, at a low barrel entry proof is another uh, aspect of producing a rich complex product. Obviously to be a bourbon, it has to be um, under 125 proof barrel entry. Uh, and traditionally it is on the higher end, 120, 125. 
115 is traditionally lower, but you're starting to see a lot more bourbon distilleries go in at lower entry proofs. Um, one thing I want to point out is that you will notice on these barrels, they say American Oak and then Profile Toast 91. So for a long time, um, there were some terminology that has, it's just as the terminology has, has shifted to become more popular over the years. Um, one thing is like blending. I'm sure some of you guys know like five, ten years ago, blending was not a popular term. It's actually a lot more popular term now, so you're starting to see a lot more distilleries uh, blending recipes together in different barrels together. Um, toasting is, has become really popular recently. You're starting to see a lot of brands come out with toasted products and will you know, even label, uh, prominently label their bourbons as toasted, whereas you know, Chattanooga Whiskey does a lot of things, so you really gotta turn the label around and read all of the information because you know, we're not just four grains, three you know, specialty malts, etc. but we're, we're also utilizing different toasts, different chars, so every batch, every 3,000 gallon batch is going to yield between 8 to 10 barrels. Well, when we're distilling that, half of that batch goes into four char barrels and the other half of that batch goes into three char barrels with our own custom toast profile that we work with independent state out of Kentucky. So we do a 50-50 blend on every batch of 91 and 111 which is really unique. So in bottling, they come together, or in the case of 91, they come together in a Solera barrel. But those different, the difference in flavor profiles between toasts and chars that are untoasted is significant, 20, 30% in flavor profile. Thank you, Tim. So you guys top fill your barrel from yes. the side to yep. the store that way? Yep. Not many people do that. Yep, that's a good segue, actually. Let's go check out how that uh, works. So we top fill our barrels for what you're about to see. All right, we're going in here to the richness part where you see that they're stored vertically as opposed to horizontally like a lot of places. Not sure how much the lighting is going to be in here. I'm not trying to see if I can adjust it a little bit. So we're inside here where the barrels are stored. Trying to get some better lighting. So all of these barrels are full. Uh, we've got approximately 5,000 barrels in here. Um, you know, about 75-80% are made up of our flagship recipes and then the other, you know, 20-25% are made up of a variety of different recipes and barrel finishes. Um, I can see back in the, you know, back corner there's some Isla Scotch barrels back there. Um, so we've got some, we've got some uh, Silver Oak Cab barrels in here that we're doing some projects on. So, anyways, that's our barrel finishing series is uh, is ongoing, and each year will be a new release and. Um, and so, anyways, it's uh, it's been it's you know so far the tawny port and the Isle of Scotch uh, I, I think have been terrific and I'm excited about uh, the future of that. Um, we also have you know the variety of recipes like high wheat malt bourbons, high peat malt bourbons, high roast malt bourbons uh, that make up bottled and bond and uh, make up uh, blends for a variety of other products as well. For example. Uh, there's a lot of you know finishing like finished bourbons out there. The wine finished bourbons out there, and they uh, they're, they're traditionally one recipe finished in like a, a port barrel, for example. Um, but unless you turn the Chattanooga whiskey label around and you read the back of it, you might not know that Chattanooga whiskey's tawny port was a blend of six different recipes before we finished it in. Uh, in our tawny pork barrels. So just lots of, and that goes back to that blending thing I was talking about earlier, right? Like 
tons of opportunities to blend really rich complex grains together and different you know toasts and chars uh, together to make some really unique products um, being in southeast Tennessee we get a lot of evaporation probably average north of 5% a year uh, which is great for aging the product we're in a black you know uh, dunnage essentially um, so it really retains the uh, the heat over the over the summer and um, <clears throat> so we do have an aging facility as well across the street uh, and then we've got one that is um, in the basement of the experimental distillery that's our barrel cellar uh, there and that that holds about 200 experimental barrels what's the oldest um, you got so our our age range is going to be you know I, I would say upwards of six years um and stylistically this is actually it's a great question because i want to touch on chattanooga whiskey a lot of people know us as kind of the, um, a high quality rich complex younger age bourbon right uh for 91 and 111 but stylistically 91 111 being between two and three years old and and 99 rye you know being between three and four and bottom and bond between four and five i mean it stylistically it really works well with our with with all the steps in the process and the recipes and the different grains the products are continuing to age they will continue to get older but uh but that's kind of our age range and i don't see it massively changing anytime soon so any other questions before we check out the slayer barrel the bottling line and head back to drink some whiskey all right, cool. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's walk to the Slayer Barrel. Let's go to the Slayer Barrel. All right, Bourbon Quest. So now we're going in here to where the Solarium Barrel is, as you can see there. Very unique process. So you guys will notice that these barrels are slightly bigger than those barrels. <laughs> so this is a 4,000 gallon white oak Solera barrel. And then we have a 650 gallon white oak Solera barrel. And we are making way for a 2,500 gallon white oak Solera barrel. And what is unique about these products, um, with 91, so like I was mentioning in the still room, that each batch uh, is comprised of 50% four chars with no toast and 50% three chars with our toast profile. After those products have fully matured, the 91 recipe is fully matured in our barrel house, they then come into our 4,000 gallon white oak Slayer barrel, which also has a char on the inside of it, a light char. And this contains about 100 of the 91 recipe barrels, a 50-50 blend of four chars and three chars with a toast, which allows them to co-mingle at barrel strength or full proof before we proof it down to 91 proof in here and bottle it out. So this improves both consistency and complexity. The reason we have a 650 gallon um, white oak barrel over here is that holds our original recipe from Indiana that we called 1816. And so this is essentially our past. The 91 Solera barrel is our present. And then we have a future infinity barrel coming in that is the future. And one time a year, we will blend the past, the present, and the future together into an anniversary bottle, which is called Powers. So is that always 50-50? Yes. Well, you're saying roughly, but yes. That, I mean, that's the goal, is to keep it 50 What made you guys do Solera? Because that seems pretty uncommon. Well, Hunter Crafters in America is, is uh, an awesome you know, barrel crafting, large barrel crafting company out of, uh, out of um, they're near St. Louis. 
and uh, they have supplied the gear industry for a long time, and so Grant has, is, has been familiar with them, and Grant saw it as an opportunity. As you know, we look at every step in the process, he saw it as another opportunity to add richness and complexity. So for comparison's sake, is there anybody else that's using a similar process? I don't know, I don't really like to compare ourselves. Yeah, to I was so. going to say, I think it's what makes you very unique. Yeah, I, I do, yes, this is a very unique uh, process. Not a lot. So. Uh, all right, so let's walk in the bottle and then let's uh, take a sip of whiskey. Now we're entering the uh, bottling center here. Which we don't normally run or necessarily even like to run, but it's, we get to you know, we do what we gotta do. So, uh, we only make two sides, we only make some different styles, we only make some five of them. So, 100% of what Chattanooga whiskey is in the market comes from this bottle, which also comes from this. So, if you stare now, only out of the experimental facility. So, We've been fortunate with our supply chain. We have not had any major issues, um, nor do we foresee any uh, issues. We had a boat hung up at port for a while last year, but. Uh, fortunately, that was mitigated by us, you know, our you know, side of the board was really heavy up uh, during that time to try and make sure that we run it. Our last is custom flag, Elks, Illinois, our boss supplier. Uh, our fourth is custom sport. So, we are very intentional in our packaging and our messaging to be authentic and um, have that kind of past uh, and progressive combo. So, you know, we try to honor the history of whiskey in Chattanooga, you know, pre-prohibition, every opportunity we get to, and then also really move that needle forward. So, which is why our packaging looks the way that it does. All right, you guys want to go try some? Uh, if you go out that door, those double doors to the left, you'll be back into the hotel. All right, Bourbon Plus, hope you've enjoyed this uh, inside look here at Chattanooga Whiskey. We're now about to go do some tasting, my favorite part, drinking the whiskey. <laughs> Bourbon Quest! <laughs> <laughs> there you go.